The world of horror is one of film's most successful genres, and some of the most memorable images ever to be created have come from it. Films like Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho and John Carpenter's Halloween have grabbed the imaginations of the public and left children hiding under their sheets. None more so than the bone-chilling creations of Asian cinema. In this short documentary, I will be finding out more about Japanese horror and how it has influenced American horror today. On the silver screen, our inner fears are projected more vividly than ever. The stars of this Asian success story have been the Japanese and Koreans. They are credited with some of the most critically acclaimed box office hits. We find ourselves in 1998, when a young filmmaker had a vision of creating one of cinema's most iconic movie monsters ever seen. The young ghost, Sadako. In the film Ringu, the population of Tokyo are exposed to a mysterious tape that kills anyone who watches it. But the story doesn't end there, for we later discover that the tape is cursed by the ghost of one young girl, Sadako, who takes her revenge on whoever watches the film. The film was so scary it left people too scared to turn on their television sets for weeks, and it was this film that sparked the Hollywood age of Japanese remakes. The first of these remakes was The Ring, an almost shot-for-shot -shot exact remake of the original Ringu. The producers of the remake brought in the director of the original film, Hideo Nakata, to re-envisage his film for the Western world. The new film, now starring Hollywood star Naomi Watts, was a huge success, making over $229 million worldwide by the end of March 2003. By then, the Japanese-inspired ghost, now with the name Samara, was surely stuck in the American mind, and a thirst for Japanese horror swept through the Western world. I think the thing that made these films really exciting for a Western audience was the fact that they were so much more innovative. The American cinema had always been based on gore, and everyone, I think, got fed up with seeing seven teenagers slaughtered over a night or two. But with Japanese and Korean films, it was about the fear of the unknown and the atmosphere. What you can't see or stop, that is far more frightening. Of course, The Ring was not the only film to have its inspiration taken from a Japanese film. Others include The Grudge, a remake of the Takashi Shimizu original, Zhuon. The story tells of a house where the brutal murder of a woman and her son took place, leaving a curse that kills anyone who enters the house. The monster of this film is a ghost named Kayako, a long-haired woman who haunts her victims. The film was a huge success, making over $200 million worldwide. The woman as victim has always been a central part of horror, you only have to look at American horror films and find that it is very rare for the man to be the one in danger. But what's interesting about Asian horror is that very often you have woman as avenger. The horror film that best explores the female role in society is the Japanese cult classic, Audition. Audition tells the story of Shike Haru Aoyama, a middle-aged widower who has lost his wife to illness. He reveals to his friend, a film producer, he desires to start dating again. His friend comes up with the perfect plan to find Shigeharu, the perfect woman, by setting up an audition. But when Aoyama thinks he has found the perfect woman, he soon discovers that there is more to the story than he expected. Horror, it seems, is able to get away with issues other genres cannot. This is perhaps due to the fact that people are expecting to be shocked, so the more the important issue they face with, the more shocked they'll be. Um, for example, the Japanese film Suicide Club 
shows schoolgirls jumping in front of a moving train and stand-up comedians stabbing themselves live on stage. In other genres, this would not be acceptable. A more recent film that explores the role of women in modern Japan is the film Confessions, Japan's official entry into the 2011 Oscars. In this film, two students murder their teacher's daughter, but as the plot unwinds, the teacher, Yuko Morigochi, reveals her twisted idea of revenge. Yuko injects into the student's milk the blood of her HIV-positive husband, but we soon discover the children are not so innocent. The murder was not an accident, and as a result of this, the children grew violent, one murdering his best friend and the other his own mother. The film builds to an unexpected climax, incorporating artistic slow motion shots and angles. The film released in 2010 proved to be a success, being nominated for 20 awards for the following year and winning seven, including Japanese Academy Award for Best Director, Best Screenplay and Best Film. Since the 90s, South Korea's entertainment industry has experienced a massive growth and Korean horror films have enjoyed phenomenal success, attracting a strong fan base and even inspiring Korea's first horror festival. Now competing with Japanese horror on a level playing field, South Korean filmmakers are credited with creating a radically different and scarier breed of box office winners. One of the most frightening films to have come from the new wave of South Korean horror is Phone. Phone tells the story of Ji Won, an investigative reporter who receives the attention of an unrelenting stalker. Unable to shake him off, Ji Won flees to her editor's new apartment and buys a mobile phone with an unregistered number. To her horror, it's a phone that connects her directly to the spirit of a dead high school student, who eventually reveals her terrifying secret. Phone has done for phones what Ringu did for television sets, and its success eventually led to a Japanese remake called Chakushin Ari, also known as One Missed Call, which itself was remade by Hollywood and given the same title. I think the American film industry see these Asian films as just being scary and don't look deeper into the history and myth around the film, which leads them to make a film by just sticking a ghost with long black hair and expecting it to be effective as Asian horror films. But do these films deserve more recognition? Many people believe they should, as it brings films over to the Western world that would normally never be seen. Dark Water is a good example of this. For this remake of the Japanese original of the same name, the producers brought in the director of the first film, Hideo Nakata, to write the new Hollywood version. Although the film took on a new American look at the story, the director, Walter Sales, kept much of the atmosphere of the original film. The movie starring Oscar winner Jennifer Connelly made a reasonable profit at the box office, making around $50 million worldwide. But according to the Cine Fantastique online article Remaking Asian Horror, A Brief History, the film suffers from the all-too-common It's Not Really a Horror Film syndrome, and instead tells the story of the relationship between a mother and a daughter and the declining mental state of the mother due to the divorce from her husband. Unfortunately, the base of the story had been stolen by The Ring 2, with many scenes feeling all too familiar and audiences left feeling disappointed. I think the film was released at the wrong time. Had it been released before The Ring 2, it would have made much more of an impact on the box office and The Ring 2 would have still made as much as it did because of its strong fan base. I think sometimes you just have to give a genre a rest. Too many of these Asian remakes have been made in such a short time of space that audience feel that they've seen it already. One good thing about this Asian remake era has been that 
horror films in America have taken on a more thought-provoking way of making horror films and are slowly moving away from the wave of Texas massacre style splatter films that had become all too common in Western cinema. So it seems that Asian horror remakes have had its day, leaving behind them a legacy of huge successes and disappointing failures. But with the third Ring movie on its way and rumours of a fourth grudge, horror has once again proven that you can never know what's around the corner. Sleep tight.